I get thirsty in 15 minutes. <laughs> Got a little brighter, didn't it, brother? <laughs> All right, good to be here. I um, This week, the plant went down again. And when it goes down, they always, are you willing to work Saturday and Sunday? I said, yeah. I am, but you know what I mean. Sundays is, is if it's emergency and you have to have me, I'll be in there Sunday. So they let me off. It's good to be at church. And uh, good to have them be considerate of you when you ask for that. And, uh, I am thankful for that. And Friday, so, so Friday I had to work about 16 hours again. And... Um, they got CO in them lines. You get up there and you climb up on these scaffolds and fix the CO leaks. My monitor is going. Bzz, 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 bzz. If you breathe that stuff, it's a silent killer. It'll kill you. So um, I had to get fresh air on that. You, you get in, you hook on a tank, and that's the first time I ever did that. You hooked on a tank, and it blows air in. You breathe that, and you work on that CO. And uh, something else so on that note I'm glad I'm alive Amen. you know you you get around that stuff and work or work around it and it's amazing the things you get into all right I'm I'm switching to a new Bible note Bible so y'all gonna have to hang on no no it ain't no it's a Ruckman Bible <laughs> I had a giant print. I, I got it, but I was studying this morning, and I went over this, and I said, you know what? I'm going with Dr. Ruckman's notes <laughs> because it's spot on, right? I mean, it, it, I, mean I, I love his... I mean, it's good. Um, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Um, we went over one through five, but I'm going to go ahead and, and read it. I'll read the whole chapter, and then we're going to try to get through this whole chapter here. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in the vexation, when at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, and afterwards did more grievous afflict her by the way of the sea, by Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them have the light shine. Now you need to remember set first and second advent when the Lord first came and he's going to come the second time and you see that light. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. Uh, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, and in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning with, and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He's going to do it in zeal. He always does. <laughs> the Lord sent a word into Jacob, and, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, and they say in pride and stoutness of heart, The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hoonstones, and sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of reason, reason, against him and join his enemies together and the Syrians before and the Philistines behind and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them neither do they seek the Lord of hosts therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel the head and the tail branch and rush in one day. 
and ancient and honorable. He is the head and the prophet that teacheth lies. He is the tell. For the leaders of his people cause them to err. They that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless widows. For every one is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness turneth, burneth as the fire. It shall devour the burn, um, briars, the thorns, and shall kindle in the thickness of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. The people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch out the right hand and the hungry. He shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll bless this passage. And uh, I always feel incapable of teaching, Lord, and I pray that you help me to uh, say the right words and teach the right thing and uh, help us to get our mind focused on what you want taught this morning in Jesus' name and help me to be able to teach it as in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so that first part, you have first and second advent, the light of Israel, and it's brighter. And then when the Lord comes when he first came, the Jews rejected him. Now we have the second advent coming on. We're looking at this at, after the, sec, the, the tribulation, the Lord comes back again. And there's going to be light. That's going to be light. That's light on earth. And in the tribulation, it's the light's going to be like dark. I mean, it's going to dim it. <laughs> and uh, Jesus Christ is the light, and that's what it's talking about right there in that first part. Now, look at verse 6. That's where we left off. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting, the Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, them are the names of God right there mentioned. Y'all ever listen to Handel's Messiah? Handel's Messiah is great, and I need to dig out the tapes, what I have, and play that thing again, because that's what I think of Handel's Messiah right there. And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. King of kings forever. Y'all ever hear that? Man, that's good. <laughs> and uh, the hair stands on my back when I hear that. Because that's the Lord of hosts. Now when I see that, when I hear that, I mean you look at the Lord Jesus Christ and I see Him on a white horse coming right down there at the battle of Armageddon. King of kings and Lord of lords and He's fixing to wipe them out. And uh, that's what I see in this passage. I mean it's, it starts right there and He's coming at the second advent and it is... We... <laughs> You don't want to be on the wrong side. You want to be on the right side. And um, you know what he's doing though in, that, in uh, the tribulation right here in this passage? He's letting Israel get just wiped out. And there, there's only going to be a little bit, just a small remnant left before he comes and saves them. And uh, I read it, it's a it's a, it's a terrible passage. It's great when you see the Lord come in. But when you look at that and you look at the Jews and you look at the conflict coming up, which by the way, it could be within seven years right now. It could happen. I mean, this could be within under ten years. Happen right now. And uh, you see that and you look at it and you look at what we have and you compare it We've got it. We've got it made. Um, 
I looked at this, it says, Wonderful, Counselor, here's the names of God, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You have, his salvation is wonderful. And we went over some verses. He's a counselor. You want to get counsel in the Bible? and from You start with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, as a pastor, you know, I, I always try to, you know, somebody asks you advice or counsel on something, that is, um, that's the Lord's job first. <laughs> Amen. And if God can use me to say what that book says, I'll counsel in it. You know what I mean? But you've got to be careful in that because that's God's job. Yes, sir. Amen. And, and uh, first counsel is if you talk to the Lord about it, He's the counselor. Amen. 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 you got problems, you, um, you go straight to the Lord. Mighty God. You ever go through David's mighty men? And uh, David was a mighty man of God, a mighty warrior. He got that from God. Amen. Uh, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Uh, Job 42 and 4, you're going to instruct the Almighty. Uh, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Amen. I am the Almighty God, Genesis 17.1. Revelation... Uh, 1915, it talks about the Almighty God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's our God. The everlasting Father, your salvation. Yes, sir. It's everlasting, right? Amen. Who's your Father? He's the everlasting Amen. Lord, the everlasting Father, and He's, he's my Father. Amen. And uh, my salvation is going to last as long as my Father does. Yes, Amen. Amen. All that the Father giveth me shall come to Him me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out everlasting father the prince of peace look around us you see peace yes, sir. I don't see peace but I know the prince of peace Amen. we in a world of turmoil we're in wars and I'm going to go over some Dr. Ruckman's going to go over some of this stuff and uh, he mentioned something that I, I learned I learned this morning about this. <laughs> I read about it and I, I said, man, I never knew that. Uh, we'll, we'll learn about um, a song he went over. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But you realize great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. And uh, you're going to get offended in this world if you get caught up in it and you leave this book off. And you turn your back on that book, before long you'll get offended. And I'll tell you what, you need to remember that. The, the Lord is peace. And uh, knowing Him and getting into His Word, you'll get more peace that way than you will spending time in this world. Alright, Proverbs 3, 2. Long life and peace shall they add to thee. That's the words of God. Psalms 122, 6 and 8. Pray for the peace of Israel. Amen. We ought to do that. Yeah. You know what? When Israel gets peace, that means we're out of here. <laughs> when they get peace, we're going to be in glory. Yep. When they get peace, God's going to be reigning on earth. Amen. We need to pray for that. Amen. We need to come on. Even so come, Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 9, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall establish you and keep you. Amen. We need the peace of God. You need it. You get it from the Word of God. Um, you know what you have when you reject the light? You get no peace. What's His name? The Prince of Peace. When you reject Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, no peace. When you reject His Word, no peace. You get peace from the Word of God. And yet this is the, this is the most, Dr. Ruckman always said, this is the most dangerous book in the world. It's the most comforting book in the world. It's the greatest book of all. It tops out in everything. Most horrible book. Right here. No other book is more horrible than that. Uh, there is nothing more horrible than hell, and it's right in this book. And you, do you like? I don't like that a bit, <laughs> but it's there. This book is the greatest of all. 
You cannot beat it in anything. It is the greatest. All right, Jeremiah 6.16. Look at Jeremiah 6.16. And you know what people do? They reject it day by day. Every time. And, and they'll... they'll I do. There's times I'll get up and I'm busy and I'll run out the door and the Lord say, You read that book? You read my word? You checking on me? <laughs> we shouldn't do that. Jeremiah 6.14. Jeremiah 6.14 or I shouldn't do that they um, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace, peace when there is no peace see that you know why you don't have they turn their back on the word of God they turn their back on God peace, peace when there is no peace God ain't going to be around when you just walk away from his word Boy, you're in bad shape when that happens. Romans 3.17. Look at Romans 3.17. You need the peace of God. Amen. Romans 3.17. Destruction. Well, let's pick it up in verse 13, uh, 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good no not one their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues they have used deceit the poison of asp is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness go to work you'll see that and it's the grace of God we're not right there in the list of that uh, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You know the peace of God? The Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. I feel sorry for a lot of people. Uh, you go to work and you hear the cursing and everything, and they'll, they'll look at me and they'll say, Sorry, preacher. I mean, they do. And I won't ever say, ah, that's all right. I don't ever say that. Because cursing is cursing. And it's wrong. And really, I'm not the one they need to be saying sorry to. It's the Prince of Peace. And um, you don't have peace. And you know what the mark of a no peace is? A bunch of cursing and defying. That is a mark of no peace. Why are you saying that? Something bad happening, it's coming right out of your mouth. And um, you got to think about that. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans 5, 1 through 8. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. By whom also we have access by faith in this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I read it all the way to the 8, because you know what he did to get peace between you and him? Amen. He shed his blood... And he died for us. And he went on the cross of Calvary and paid our payment on the cross of Calvary. And we get peace because of his suffering. The Prince of Peace. And uh, there is no Savior like my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that can give you peace like he can. God can give you peace. And uh, all I can say is get as close to the Prince of Peace as you can. All right, uh, verse 7, increase of his government, the peace. And peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment, with justice. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And uh, he'll perform it. 
I, I skipped verse 6. Um, no, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments and rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning with fire. And I wanted to mention this. The Lord comes right in the middle of where Israel's fixing to be destroyed. You're going in the tribulation. Nation, everybody's against Israel. They're about not annihilated them. And the Lord just waits till a small remnant. And here comes the Lord. And look what it says in verse 5. We're going to back up a little bit because I don't want to skip this. For every battle of warrior is with confused noise, garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and the fuel of fire. Now, I know we, we looked at the A-bomb. It could happen. They, they're throwing that word around all the time now. Yeah, back then. And I'll tell you what, you could smoke, you could go and smoke real quick. Uh, you could go and the, and the Lord, He's got other, I mean, the Lord could do it that way. The Lord could do it whichever way He wants. And it, it may not be that way. I mean, and uh, you got, got that. Look at... Um, Look at verse 19. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of fire. No man shall spare his brother. You know what they used to do to the Jews in the Holocaust? They used to burn them. Burn them. Uh, I'll tell you what, you get to thinking about that stuff. It's wild. It's wild. Now here I wanted to... Uh, to read this, um, right there, there was a note Dr. Ruttman had. See Appendix 91. And I'm going to read this to you. Um, if you got a Ruttman Bible, you can. I'll find it here. I didn't know this. Because I'm, you know, I should, but I don't. I didn't. I said, I'm going to read that. See what it says. Well... I found out what it said. I didn't know what it was. It's a song. And uh, you know what I found out? I found out the military guys, the Nightingale, they, um, they pay attention to this. Alright. Right there in the middle of the band played Waltzing Matilda by Eric Bogle, 1972. Now when I was a young man, I carried me my pack. I lived free life of the rover, from the Murray Green Basin to the dusty outback. Well, I waltzed my Matilda all over. Then in 1950, my country said, Son, it's time you stop rambling. There's work to be done. That's World War I. Uh, so they gave me a tin hat, and they gave me a gun. They marched me away to the war. The band played Waltine Matilda. The ship pulled away from the quay, and amidst all the cheers, the flag waving, the tears, and we sailed off for Gallipio. And how well I remember that terrible day, how our blood stained the sand and the water, and how in that hell that they called Suvia uh, Bay, and we were watched, we were butchered like lambs as a slaughter. Johnny Turk. He was waiting, he primed himself well, he showered us with bullets, and he rained us with shell. And in five minute, minutes flat, uh, he'd blown us all to hell if you're not saved. And uh, nearly blew us right back to Australia, but the band played Waltzing Matilda. When we stopped to bury our slain, well, we buried ours, and the Turks buried theirs, and we started all over again. And those that were left well, we tried to survive in that mad world of blood, death, and fire. And for ten weary weeks, I kept myself alive, though around me the corpse piled higher. Then a big Turkish shell knocked me uh, overhead, and when I woke up in my hospital bed and saw what it was done, I wished I was dead and, knew, and never knew there was worse thing than dying, for I'll go no more, waltzing Matilda. All around the green bush, far and free, to hump tents and pegs, a man needs both legs. No more waltzing Matilda for me.
So they gathered the crippled, the wounded, the maimed, and they shipped us back home to Australia. The armless, the legless, the blind, the insane, those proud wounded heroes of Su 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 Suvla. Those proud wounded heroes. Uh, and as our ship sailed in circular quay, I looked at the place where my legs used to be, and thank Christ there was nobody waiting for me to grieve, to mourn, to pity. But the band played waltzing Matilda. And as they carried us down the gangway, but nobody cheered, they just stood and stared. Then they turned all their faces away, and so now every April I sit on my porch. I watch the parade pass before me, and I see my old comrades, how proudly they march, reviving old dreams and past glory. And the old men march slowly, all bones stiff and sore. They're tired old hero heroes from the forgotten war. The young people ask, what are they marching for? And I ask myself the same question. But the band plays Waltzing Matilda. The old man still answered the call. Uh, but as near fellows near, more old men disappear. Someday no one will march there at all. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. Who will come waltzing Matilda with me? And their ghosts may be heard as they march by the billabong. Who will go come a waltzing Matilda with me? I read that and um, I, I pulled the phone out and I listened to it. And then I looked at the comments under it. And when I seen them comments, it was all war vets. And they said I cried when I heard that. If you had an old war vet here that had been in that, he probably couldn't read through that. You see what I'm talking about? We get into this war and we see all that. and we get, we, The war is, we look at war not like they used to look at it. You look at the Battle of Armageddon, that's a big war. Yes, sir. And uh, the guy that wrote that, he's a war man. And uh, we look at that stuff and um, you see how it just dims and the newer generation comes and people don't know it and it just gets worse and worse. And uh, I wanted to note that because this world is a bunch of turmoil. And we need the Prince of Peace Amen. to come in. You know what one of them comments was? That war is God's judgment on sin. That's what Dr. Ruckman said. Amen. It's ju God's judgment on sin here. And you know what brings it on? Idols. You look in this chapter. It comes from idols. Amen. Death. People dying, the blood in the sand, the the water just red. D Day, you look at that. I mean, it's just thousands of thousands of young men killed, and then they see that they go back and maimed, and the old war heroes look at that and waltzing Matilda. Young people don't see it. Why? They don't know what war is. I always feel. Feel rough. I see young men. And they 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 want to get in a get in the action. But after you go through that, you don't want in the action. You want peace. You know what the peace is? The peace is knowing the Prince of Peace. And uh, some of them guys, they go crazy going through war. I don't know how you can go through it without the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, you need God. Um, I got all the names of the Lord. Well, I don't have all of them because you can't get all His names. <laughs> but I listed a bunch of names of Jesus Christ. And it listed that in verse 6. But Adam, the second Adam, Advocate, Almighty, Alpha and Omega, Amen, the Apostle, the Arm of the Lord, the Author uh, and Finisher of our faith. Author of eternal salvation, beginning of cre creation of God, beloved Son, blessed and only potentate, branch, bread of life, captain of salvation, chief shepherd, Christ of God, con ca uh, consolation of Israel, uh, cornerstone, counselor, creator, day spring, deliverer, desire of nations, door. I've got a reference for every one of them names of the Lord Jesus Christ. Elect of God. Everlasting Father, faithful witness, first and last, first begotten, forerunner, glory of the Lord, God, 
God blessed, God uh, shepherd, governor, great high priest, head of the church, heir of all things, holy child, holy one, holy one of God, holy one of Israel, horn of salvation, I am, image of God, Emmanuel, Jehovah, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, judge of Israel, the just one, king, king of kings, we just read that, uh, king of ages, 